doesn't happen by accident. Welcome everyone. Today is a great day for Christopher and Stephanie and we come together to celebrate with them. Two lives becoming one together. It's a beautiful day. We're here to celebrate in hope and in wonder. So join me in prayer, would you? God, we look for your presence here today. Jesus, we need you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. We long for you to be here with us, to lead us, to inspire us. God, to root us deep in your love. Surround us now with your presence and with your angels so that this becomes holy ground. Let the things that we do and say today be eternal. In Jesus' name, amen. Who gives this woman to this man? You may give You may be seated. It's good for you. Awesome. Well, Stephanie, Christopher, you've come a long way to be where you are today. This has been a journey. You've already experienced hard times and great times, difficult times. Difficult conversations, moments of doubt and uncertainty, but you've had to make decisions to get you to this point. Decisions on whether you're going to grow, trust, change. You've both pressed through some hard times to get here. And I think you know by now, the person you're standing next to and marrying is not perfect. <laughs> you've been wise enough to see that already I know and so the question becomes why are you doing this 
And I think I know the answer. Because you see something that's worth it. You see something that's worth investing in. You see someone that's worth taking the time to, to get to know, to grow towards, to make decisions for, to change for, to learn, to understand, to learn how to communicate with someone who's willing to sacrifice for. You see someone and something that's greater and it's worth pursuing. And here's the thing that I recognize is the thing that's worth pursuing, you don't really know what it is yet. Stephanie, you have no idea what fully lies inside of Christopher. And Christopher, you have no idea what's still to come and what she's capable of becoming. You see the person before you and, and they're beautiful today. <laughs> that didn't come out the way I intended it. <laughs> but what will this person become in 50 years, 60 years, when they're 70 and 80? Yeah. And what will, not just what will they look like, what I mean is what will they become? Who will they become after another years of marriage? You see a, a glimpse right now. And the person you're standing next to is amazing. You know that already. They're made of good stuff and they're of... It's enough for you to be willing to commit the rest of your life to explore who this person is. And it's not just watching them become who they are, but you get to participate in the process of them becoming all that they've been designed to be. It's through your support, your input, your encouragement, your prayers, your tears, so that he, so that she can become all that God has made them. I know you've already gotten more than you bargained for. You told me you each had kind of like a list of what I want in a spouse, right? You wanted a, a, a woman who's a godly woman, goes to church, blah, blah. You never anticipated somebody who would like help rescue and free sex traffic people in Cambodia at night and during the day serve the homeless in, on the streets, right? You knew you were getting a, a godly man that would give you the in independence that you needed, but you had no idea that he would be silly enough to spend spa days with you. you. You've gotten way more than you bargained for. And that reminds me of the scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says, Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror, but then... We will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know is partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. Right now you see your partner incomplete, imperfect, not fully there yet. There's more to be revealed, more to be developed. There's more to come, as amazing as they are today. There's more to come. And you get to be part of shaping that more to come, part of that revealing of what's more to come. Your love for Stephanie, your love for Christopher helps shape and reveal the more that is to come. One of the early church fathers, Irenaeus of Lyons, he said, known to have said, the glory of God is a human fully alive. And you're part of bringing glory to God by bringing your partner fully to life. When you become who you fully are and you help your spouse become who they fully are, that's the glory of God. And how does that happen? I'm going to go back to 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. This is how your love shapes who your partner is to become. That your patience, your, your desire to see the growth 
in each other comes in God's time, not in your time for each other. Your love needs to be kind because if your love is boastful and proud and arrogant and rude, it just won't work. And it cannot demand its own way. You're not trying to make Christopher, you're not trying to make Stephanie into what you desire, but reveal what God has already put inside them. And your love must never give up, never lose faith, always being hopeful and enduring because you know you're not working alone, you're working with God, together with each other. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little moment during this ceremony to give you a chance to express that love through the ceremony of foot washing. That this is an expression of, of how you humble yourself, of how you serve your partner, of how your love serves and shapes each other. It says in John chapter 13 that Jesus loved his disciples to the very end when he got up from the table, put on the towel, and washed his disciples' feet. And that this act of loving service, he then said to them, do this to each other so that the world can know. And so it's in this kind of loving service that will symbolize today that will give you the space to be safe to grow to develop and to become all that God has so we're going to give you guys a moment to to have that foot washing ceremony Camilla you can help and the band you can play So Christopher and Stephanie, because marriage is meant to be an until death do us part relationship, it should never be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but always reverently, deliberately, in accordance with the purpose for which God created it. You are about to dedicate the rest of your life to each other with solemn vows, with a full and sincere awareness of the wonder and the seriousness of these vows you're about to make before God and man, are you ready to proceed? Yes. We are. Awesome. Let's have those rings. You can give them to Christopher. Good job. Rings are a symbol of your marriage. The ring is gold, a symbol of the purity of your love for each other. May nothing impure ever enter into your love for each other. And the ring is a circle eternal and never-ending, and may your commitment to each other never end. Christopher, you may take the ring and place it on her finger, and as you do, you say your vows to Stephanie. Stephanie, I give you this ring as a symbol of my vow to love you the way that Christ loved the church. And that means to give up my, to give up my life for you. Excuse me. And to love you as I love myself. To, I vow to lead and to also serve when called upon and to help you serve Christ. I vow to consider your needs, excuse me, and treat you with respect and to be patient and kind. I vow to appreciate what I have and to not even notice what I don't and to never be boastful or proud. I vow to be forgiving and flexible. Not a grumpy <laughs> No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and to speak the truth in love and never give up. 
Now with all that I am and all that I have, I commit myself to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Is it on? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. on. Okay. Good. Stephanie, you may take the ring and say your vows as you place it on his finger. Oh, oh sorry. My darling Christopher, God is a potter and we are like clay in his hands. I see the beautiful masterpiece that he is creating you into. I'm so excited to be part of that journey. Christopher, I give you this ring as a symbol of my lifelong commitment to you. Love is a choice. Regardless of how life turns out, I choose to love you. I choose to always advocate for you, to lift you up in prayer, to call you out when you go astray, and help you always direct your eyes towards Jesus. My life is no longer my own. I commit to love you not solely in words, but through action. Now with all that I am and all that I have, I commit myself to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now with we'll stay facing each other. And with both of your hands joined together, looking at each other, you may express your vows of love and devotion to one another. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I, Christopher, take you, Stephanie, to have and to hold from this day forward, in sickness and in health, in poverty and in wealth, in the worst of times and in the best of times. I will love and cherish you forever. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I, Stephanie, take you, Christopher, to be my husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, in sickness and in health, in poverty and in wealth, in the best of times and the worst of times. I will love you, cherish you all the days of my life. I'm yours. <laughs> and I'm yours. Now, if you look to me, please. Mm -hmm. Give it to you. Yes, dear. This is your commitment. Christopher, do you take Stephanie, whose hand you now hold, to be your wedded wife? Do you promise before God and these witnesses that you will be to her a true and devoted husband, one that is as devoted in sickness as he is in health? as devoted to her in times of sorrow as you are in times of joy. Do you promise to be with her in times of adversity and prosperity? And above all, do you promise your loyalty and love to her and to her alone forever until that moment death separates you one from the other? If so, answer, I do. I do. And Stephanie, do you take Christopher, whose hand you now hold to be your wedded husband? Do you promise before God and these witnesses that you will be to him a true and devoted wife, one that is as devoted in sickness as she is in health, as devoted to him in times of sorrow as you are in times of joy? Do you promise to be with him in times of adversity and prosperity? And above all, do you promise your loyalty and love to him and to him alone forever until that moment death separates you one from the other? If so, answer, I do. I do. Christopher and Stephanie value you as their friends and family, and they would like to invite you to make a commitment to them. So do you, as their family and community, promise to support them and encourage them, to pray for them, to share your wise counsel, and lovingly call them out if you see them going astray? If so, answer, we do. We do. We do. Thank you. So now that Christopher and Stephanie have given themselves to each other with solemn vows, with the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of rings, I pronounce that they are husband and wife. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let's pray. God, we thank you together for the gift that is Stephanie and Christopher. We thank you for bringing them together as husband and wife on this day. 
And now, God, we boldly ask you to come and bless this union today. Honor their vows and their commitments to each other. Help them fulfill what they have promised to do. Give them grace for each other. God, offer them your wisdom and your courage for the days ahead. Pour out your Holy Spirit on them both and fill them with your love. God, may they find in each other the expression of unconditional love that you have for us. Bless them, Father, to become the man and the woman and the family that you've envisioned them to be from before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Christopher, you may now kiss your bride. And ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you Mr. and Mrs. Christopher and Stephanie Guidi. deal with this. <laughs> Hi everyone. Can you hear me? I am uh, Vincent, uh, brother of the groom. And Steve, brother of the groom. Uh, we'd like to start this toast by remembering Luciano Guidi, our father who taught us the importance of the bond between us, his sons. Though he cannot be physically present uh, for much of our lives, we know that he was always there for us in spirit, and we know he would have been so proud of Chris today. Growing up without a father is a burden that a child should not have to carry on their own. Fortunately, there are a lot of people that helped us carry that burden. Our aunts and uncles really went above and beyond. We truly believe that there is nothing they wouldn't have done for us. And our cousins, who we thought of as brothers and sisters, and with whom we shared so many amazing memories growing up. Of course, the person that influenced us the most is our amazing mother. She taught us that there is no limit to the sacrifices a parent can make for their child. The time and energy she put towards ensuring our well-being was limitless, and we can't thank her enough. It is because of her that we knew what qualities to look for in our future wives. If you're fortunate enough to know the ladies we're referring to, it is pretty obvious that we knocked it out of the park. And more importantly, that Chris kept our streak going. In addition to all of this, we had each other, which brings us to Chris. Being the most conscientious and practical of the three brothers, Chris helped us be more careful and less stupid than we otherwise might have been. He helped keep us in line, sometimes sternly, sometimes with humor, but always with love. As we enter adulthood, <laughs> um, <laughs> we, we're ever more appreciative of Chris's influence. Being grounded never got in the way of Chris's curiosity and open-minded approach to life. Not only does he try new things, but he often excels at them. From rock climbing to CrossFit to dietary optimization uh, from finance to fashion, and now facial hair. <laughs> Always searching for the best way to live, Chris has embarked on a journey of faith and now marriage. And we know he'll be great at that, too. 
We've loved getting to know Stephanie these past few years. Uh, from day one, it was clear that she was the source of his newfound happiness, always warm and kind. We look forward to having her as part of the family, officially. We wish Chris and Stephanie an amazing life together. Cheers. Cheers. Hello, hello, testing. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the party in the pandemic, AKA Stephanie and Christopher Guidi's wedding. Uh, I first wanna welcome um, all the folks that traveled very, very far. We have Grandma Shirley from Texas, welcome. We have Tommy from Los Angeles. Welcome. We have the corn crew from Chicago. Welcome. Um, what? That I don't know. Oh, okay, yeah. So my mother and I traveled from Cambodia. I will take that credit, thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, so here we go. Um, okay, so my name is Camilla, and I am the middle mayor girl, a.k.a. the random plus one at all the Guidi events. Maybe you've seen me. Um, today, we are missing the youngest mayor girl, who is also in Cambodia, and sends her love. Since COVID, I am grateful for the number one very, very eligible spot as the maid of honor, so to speak. Um, it's hard to compete with the flower girl gang, but here I am and I will try my best. Um, when you come from a family of three girls, that is a very special thing. All too uniquely special in comparison to a family of three boys. Stephanie being the oldest has always been the golden child. Growing up, she was perfect in every way. Always more kind, always more patient, assertive and a conqueror of new and scary things. For me, my big sister paved the way and challenged me to see the world in a big and bright way. So much, she challenged me to move to New York because I had a personal dream to work in the fashion industry. And after she graduated from college, I challenged her to give New York City a chance for just one summer because I loved it and I thought she might love it too. Stephanie's journey in New York has not been an easy one. Stephanie clocking in almost nine years now can attest to the journey of New York City in the beginning as a very difficult one. The high energy, the dense population of people, the unique challenges of personal space, and even deep loneliness. On very hard days, she would lament to me and express how she could already tell that New York will not be forever and that she was not built for this kind of city. And that is where our story of Christopher begins. Steffi and I were roommates living in Brooklyn and we had hit a critical spot in our journey in New York and we both wondered if we would stay. I decided to leave forever for Sweden. Um, I'm back though. Um, and Stephanie was forced to look for a new roommate and a New York experience that did not involve her baby sister, which was a very scary and difficult thing. Christopher had been a surprise guest at a backyard Brooklyn barbecue, and it wouldn't be until one year later where their love story would begin. And they would be, by chance, meet again for the second time. Christopher would go on to ask Stephanie out on a date, and Stephanie, truly being Stephanie, would not pick up on the subtle cues for romance. But soon enough, they began dating, and after weeks of hearing about this random boy from thousands of miles away in Sweden, Stephanie would send a family picture in our family group chat 
of Stephanie and Stephanie, or Christopher and Stephanie, all dressed up, and Stephanie holding a final rose. From there, the adventure and love story begins with parties through Global Table, shout out guys, um, a food club in the city that Stephanie had started, through a Christian community group like Proximity, many, many hangouts with the Guidi family, which includes camping and delicious Italian dinners, and Stephanie would seamlessly fit into the Guidi family due to her love of people, her love of food, um, and especially her love for the Guidi nieces. The irony of it all is that where New York had been a fickle place in Stephanie's heart, it would be the most ironic thing that she would meet a man who would forever tie her to this city, Christopher, the Italian boy from Long Island. As the first mayor girl to finally get married, we couldn't have prayed for a better match. Christopher has proven to be a faithful, steadfast man in Stephanie's life who would support her in her pursuit of God starting a business, a rich and robust inherited family just above and below her new apartment in Brooklyn, and of course, just 45 minutes away at Nonez. Christopher and the Guidi family has truly created a new vision for her life in New York and a divine purpose of loving this man through the good and the bad. When pondering good marriage advice, as a single girl in New York City, I clearly don't have any. So instead, I implore Reverend Tim Keller's advice from his lecture at Google on his New York Times bestseller book, The Meaning of Marriage. He says, the essence of marriage is not a fleeting feeling of passion and ego that comes and goes, but instead it is the covenant the overarching, deep, freeing promise of loving each other through changes thick and thin. Not a consumer marriage, but a covenant marriage made before God in the likeness of God and his infinite love for us. As Ryan, the pastor, poignantly said this morning, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrong. But instead, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. And in 1 John 4, 18 through 19, there is no fear in love, but perfect love dries out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made in perfect love. We love because he first loved us. So in conclusion, uh, would you bow with me in a short prayer over Stephanie and Christopher? Father God, we thank you for Stephanie. We thank you for this gift of Christopher to this family. And as a joint community and family, we pray over Stephanie and Christopher through their covenant of everlasting love. May this, joy, this day be joyous and full of blessing forevermore. Amen. Christopher, welcome to the family. Thank you.